Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Thursday. What day is it today? It is the uh, 15th, December 15th, 2022. We are about halfway through the month of December. This month is flying by. Ooh, man, it's been a busy fall for me, now busy winter, and uh, I'm ready to get back into it. Tested negative this morning, feeling good about that. I actually feel less good today than yesterday, but today I felt uh, I tested negative, yesterday I tested positive, so I feel like that's good. I did get out of the house today, wearing a mask everywhere I go when I'm inside, but um, ran some errands. Picked up a bunch of packages, uh, which is what's in the um, thumbnail for today. And uh, yeah, I'm not in breaking embargoes because uh, I don't do that intentionally ever. Sometimes I do it on accident, I think, but I never do it intentionally. And uh, the stuff that I bought, the stuff that I'm going to show you today is all stuff. Well, all the, sh well, they're, not, they're not all stuff that I bought myself, but anything that like the two most interesting things are things that I bought myself. They're not under embargo. It can't be under embargo if I could just buy it off the website, right? So we'll talk about it a little bit today. Um, but first, let's say hi to everyone listening in on the um, podcast, the audio only version. Hopefully you guys are having a good run today. My run, I did 45 minutes on the treadmill. Still feeling like a little bit, you know, groggy. I don't know if it's that I just haven't been running a lot lately or that I'm still recovering. My body's still recovering from being sick or what. But like, it felt like the heartbeat should have been like five beats per minute, maybe 10 beats per minute lower than it was whatever it was showing up. So I was like, eh, whatever, take it easy. But my knee is like acting up. So I feel like I have definitely a lot of those like runner's knee type symptoms, but in my left knee this time. So I've been doing a lot of the rehab stuff that I did when I had it on my right knee a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get through it, give that cartilage some chance to respond, get some blood flow going in there, give it some stimulus in terms of some of the exercises that I'm doing, and then I'll be back and ready to train hopefully soon. But we'll see. Until then, I'm going to try to take it easy, not too long on the, the running, and then probably hit the bike a little bit too just to keep the aerobic levels up now that I'm feeling back up to it. Uh, and then uh, so so – long story short, hopefully to wrap that up, hopefully everyone that's running and listening to the podcast, hopefully you're having a good run too. Everyone that's watching this later after the fact, but uh, you're watching it on YouTube, welcome to you guys as well. Feel free to interact with us in the comments um, because you know, you're still getting a chance to see it and interact. It's just not real time, but I appreciate you guys. All right, let's see who we got here in the chat. Uh, we've got Mace Windex who's here, says cool, love it. And this is here says, hi, Kabuzi and everybody. Pip's paw is still sore. I saw that the other day, and you mentioned that in the chat. Sorry to hear that. So I'll be listening in while on the treadmill tonight. It's still snowing outside here anyway. Oh, sorry to hear about that. Does this happen every year? I feel like this happened last year too. Maybe when the, maybe when the seasons change, that gets Pip. Um, Eliza says, hi, Kofam. Had a nice run this morning. Practically tropical at 26 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, Frank Sear says, get better, Pip. Sean had uh, easy-ish six in the morning with a nice wave emoji. He said his knee is a little grumpy, so I'll probably take tomorrow off. Mm, all right. Hopefully it's a very transitory thing. Uh, but he said he just spent the last hour watching Metaspeed Sky versus Edge videos, looking at my watch date, et cetera, to figure out if I'm a cadence or a stride runner, so I know what shoe to try. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, I remember ASICs was at the Meta, at the, uh, Meta Time Trials event. All the athletes... Maybe not all. A lot of the athletes wore uh, a pod that was a lot like, that looked exactly like the Koros foot pod. I don't think it was a Koros foot pod. Um, but it hooked on the waist strap in the back. And um, from that, they did a lot of data collecting at that Meta Time Trials event. I don't know whatever came of it because um, I haven't heard any follow up, but they were saying that there was going to be an app and some sort of other ways that you can like sync your like run data to something and then it would tell you what you are um but i i think i, I just think of it as like i i don't i don't know how how much longer they're going to keep this like stride versus cadence runner thing like i get i get the sense that asics japan really likes it because i think that's a kind of thing that like uh like I think more Eastern running cultures tend to prefer also similarly, like in Australia. Um, I feel like I get from what I understand of the different kind of like running retail and running cultures that it's a little bit more like they like that kind of thing. Where in the U S we're like, I don't understand. Is this like a heel striker shoe or what, you know? Um, but what I, the way I kind of look at it is 
if you like it when your racing shoes have really uh, aggressive rockers, then try the Edge. If you like it when your um, racing shoes have like a big landing pad, kind of like an Apple Fly in the forefoot, get the Sky Plus. So that's kind of how I look at it. I also, other people look at it. And I think that like, I've talked to like Dina Castor about it a little bit too. I don't know if this is like official um, coming from ASICS or Mammoth Track Club, but she was like, you know, a lot of her, she's like a lot of my athletes tend to really like the Metaspeed Sky Plus for their longer marathon effort stuff. But if they're going to be doing repetitions on the track, but not in flats, but they want something speedy, um, or they're doing like 800s and 400 meter repeats, then they'll reach for the meta speed edge. And so I kind of like it for like 5k, 10k work edge, half marathon, marathon sky plus. So that's kind of another way I look at it too. Ho hopefully that helps Sean. Um, everybody says probably we'll just end up going to the local running shop. If they have them both, a lot of stores aren't carrying them both, I think. So that might be tough, but if you can, that is the best way to do it. All right. Um, all right. Yes. Yeah, Sean says yay for negativity. And Leona says, Mike, hope you're feeling better too. And test negative. Yeah. I feel fine. I've been, I've been feeling fine. Um, but you know, like once I start running, my body tells me like mm, something happened. It's, it's hard to distinguish between whether it's, I'm still, still like feeling the, the lingering effects of being sick or if it's just like, yeah, don't forget that marathon, that third one we ran in eight weeks. That was just like not that long ago. Cause I was looking at, um, Michelle Baxter's the um the runner's plate uh who i met at cim last year because we were on a panel together um and she broke three for the first time there last year and then she broke three again there this year i think she was running with her sister i think it was it her sister something like that um and i did get a chance to talk to her for a brief moment like at the end of the race because i saw her at the finish line she was like a good six seven minutes ahead of me but um i saw her there and then I did see her on Strava and she, her first run since CIM was like yesterday. And she's like, boy, my legs are feeling it still. And I was like, oh, wow, that's a lot, a long time. But yeah. All right. Um, yes. Look, someone else said that they're getting a Kukumi Sen 9 today too. Um, yeah. Cameron Ty Johnson says, my Sen 9 will be delivered today. Yeah. Mine got delivered today. So um, let's take a look at that. Should we go down that with that first? You, you guys, let's, well, I'll just go down on the pile. I got a pile of stuff here and I feel like I probably should have opened some of this stuff sooner. We'll kind of go through it. We'll go, we'll go through it quick, but yeah. Uh, although Eric says only 20 minutes left for me to break that embargo. Compose your own club. Clink. That's funny. All right. First thing, uh, I have a couple more packages from Soar. I got them, I think the same time as all the other packages, um, but I just never got around to opening them. So let's take a look at these. This first one is nice. Long tights. They say sore on the left thigh, or I guess like high on the, I guess is the right side. And then I like this. It looks like those speed dots that they said that like Kipchoge wore when he was, or they were testing when they, they were going to put on people's legs. But I think it's just reflective stuff here. Um, the material is like kind of like it's stretchy, but it's like different. Not like a normal tight. It feels more like. I don't know. I don't know how to ex explain it, um, but it is stretchy. So that's nice. It feels more like, almost kind of like it's a rain layer almost, but not rubbery. And then I'm not sure how much I like this. This back pocket is, looks kind of like a mess. I'm not sure I like this. It does have some reflective elements on the back of the ankle, but I'm not sure about this guys. It, there, it is a drop in pocket that then has a button and there's more pockets inside. So there's kind of like two stash pockets and then a bigger pocket for, I guess, garbage or whatever. And then underneath that, it's passed through. So I guess you could put your t-shirt in there if you took your t-shirt off while you're running in full tights. I don't, I don't know. This is kind of a lot happening here. Um, but then there is a zipper pocket that goes underneath all that. I guess that's where you would put your keys. We'll, we'll test them out. I'm, I'm not sure about this one. Like if they could have just not, maybe just had like one big pocket. I mean, they're, maybe they're trying to do too much with this one. I don't know, but maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll be perfect. We'll see. All right, next. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Marino says, what the, an afterthought fanny pack thing. I don't know. Uh, they're trying to do more pockets. Like those shorts that Ben uh, Felton ran in, Ben is running. 
Um, he says it can hold eight gels. And I'm just like, split shorts I can hold eight gels? I'm not sure about that, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. Mark's like, give me all the pockets. <laughs> I, I, that's normally what I say. All right. Next. Oh, this is a beautiful. This is a lovely color. Is this like an indigo? I think this might be like an indigo. This is a very rich color. I'm liking it a lot. It feels kind of like, uh, like a, almost like a papery merino blend. Let's see what's in here. Yeah. Long sleeve merino and silk t-shirt base. So it's intended to be a base layer. I like this. On the back, like the label is on the outside, but it's kind of like, it's like a, like a rubbery patch, but it's kind of like a patch. And I kind of like it when the patches are on the outside rather than the inside. I just like the look of it kind of makes it look like it's more raw. And then there's a little sore tabby right on the side. Can you see that yeah, right there on the other side? Um, no thumb holes, but it's a base layer. I think this is going to be actually really nice. All right. Leona says, papery doesn't sound soft though. Yeah, it's not. So Maybe it'll soften up, but it just feels like a little bit like, um, I don't know, a little bit more dry. I think a lot of the sore stuff feels that way. You guys got to check it. You guys got to check some of the sore stuff out. I think that's like the best way. I can't like, I'm having a hard time explaining it. All right, next we got a jacket. I like this jacket. I like the cut of this jacket. This is nice. Um, sleeves are nice and long. Um, cuffed at the end with a little bit of elastic. I don't know if you could see it, but it says sore on this. See that right there? It says sore all the way around. Um, all the way, that piping is all the way around this scuba hood too. My favorite kind of hood. Um, I like this. What is it? Like a pink salmon? Is it the same color as this shirt? for the zippers for the quarter zip and then for the chest pocket which i feel like you could put like a key card in there there is also a back pocket so it's more like a i think that more jackets need to utilize this this back pocket area um kind of like they do with cycling shirts or what do they call them jerseys i think you could fit a phone in there i'm not sure how comfortable a phone would be in there but i will test it out it kind of feels like a rain layer it's got a reflective kind of the sore Kind of like, what do, what do you call this? It's not a chevron. It's half a chevron. I'm not sure. And then there's some ref other reflective piping along the back, kind of like diagonal, kind of giving you that V-shaped torso. So nice. And it's a sore down here, reflective. All right. Mark Peterson, it's almost looks orange. Yeah, it's like pinkish orange, kind of like this shirt. I think it is the same as this shirt. I don't know. I feel like, do all the colorists go to the same convention? Because how are, like, how do they all figure out what the colors are going to be? And they always end up at the same ones. Or is it like all the fabric people, maybe the fabric people are getting together and we're like, all right, guys, we're only going to do 17 colors this year. These are the ones that we can offer for 2023. Maybe that's how it works. I don't know. Um, yeah. Mark Peterson says it's a, it's a chev. Because it's a half chevron? Isn't that cheese? Chev? No. <laughs> uh. Oh, Martha says pinkish orange is coral usually. I don't know if it's called coral. Um, it does have some uh, adjustable bungee poles on the side so you can get it really nice and cinched. Um, winter anorak, 79%. PA, 29% EL. I don't know what those abbreviations mean. Not off the top of my head. I'm trying to find the label to see if it has a colorway name on it. It just says winter anorak. Size M, black. So it doesn't say the other colors. All right, guys, here's, here's what you wanted. Breaking. Breaking embargoes. Talking about the Takumi Sen 9. Just kidding. I bought this. Paid for it myself. Um... Oh no, this is not the Takumi Sen 9. This is the Adidas Adizero SL. I wanted to show this to you guys because I've had it for a while um, and I want to get you guys to get a, a chance to look at it. Here's, I, I, you know, you guys know I love the, uh, the regular SL20. Remember the SL20? And then they made an SL20.2 in the same year as the SL20. And then they had a third SL20, but they didn't call it SL20.3 or SL23. 
I don't know what they're doing, but now we got the Adazero SL, which looks really nice. I like the upper, it reminds me very much of like a Boston. I mean, this is giving me straight up Boston vibes. I loved it, like old school Boston vibes. And I was originally super excited because I looked at this like like a couple minutes before I was getting on the, like heading to the garage to drive to the airport for our TRE. And I'm like, oh my goodness, a Light Strike Pro shoe with no carbon in it. That's interesting. And then uh, while I'm at the airport, I get the spec sheet. Um, it's Light Strike for most of the shoe, which you see here. And there's a puck of Light Strike Pro, kind of where like a zoom air pocket would go um in a pegasus so i'm feeling it's gonna be i'm hoping it's boston nine reminiscent but i have a feeling it's gonna be more pegasus reminiscent so all right do you want the takumi sen nine or i got a hoka shoe that i think you're gonna not gonna expect you're not gonna all right let's do the hoka real quick so this one I got it in a nine and a half because I've been liking a lot of like the trail shoes from Hoka in nine and a half and the ones with bigger stack I've been liking in, in a half size up. So this is the unisex Mafate Origins shoe. Bought this one myself, did not get this one. Um, it is like a retro re-release of the original Mafate. It's even got like on the side, it says, Hubble, because I think that's like the language they use to describe the foam in the original one. But look at this shoe. Isn't this amazing? This is incredible. I just think that this looks incredibly goofy and also incredibly good all at the same time. Like, I don't know what they've done up here to make it look so like weird up in the forefoot, but like this is a shoe that I'm going to wear around all winter long. Like my Timberland boots are like, I had like sneaker boots. And I've worn out that outsole after like two years now of like winter getting around wear. This is going to replace them because like, look at this. This thing is just a lot of fun. It's got some speed laces in here with a little elastic band to put the extra laces underneath. It's puffy. It's like old school Hoka all the way. Zero gravity technology. Look at that. It even still says Hoka One One. Right? I mean, I thought, I'm surprised that they went back so far as even do the One One, which is the old logo. And here's, look at this. If you want to go back with the regular laces, they're sparkly. Sparkly, like cream, like light gray laces. Connor <laughs> Michael V says, uh, I'd laugh endlessly if I saw that in public. I know, but I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You guys are saying that. A lot of you guys are not enjoying this shoe. Ken Fab says that shoe is ugly. Just my opinion. I don't know. I'm, I got a Hoka event that I'm going to soon. I'm going to rock this. Because before I would, uh, when I would go to a Hoka event, I would wear the This Is Never That, the collab edition shoe of the Speed Goat 4. Now, yeah, I'm going to wear these. I, I just think that they're great. I, I, I absolutely love them. I, I absolutely love them. Um, <laughs> Ted Root says, crikey. <laughs> Mr. Marino says, Spice Girl vibes. I, I see it. I see it. Uh, Mace Windex backs me up, though. He says, I like it. Looks great. <laughs> Martha says, give me back to Brooks Aurora. It performs at least. I don't know. Do you think I could run? I think I could run in these. I know there's like a retro, but like they said that like they have remade the shoe for this. Like they went back to the Mafate one for this. They said. And so they're calling it Mafate Origins, but I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, Frank says contestant for the ugliest shoe bracket. We could go. We could try it. We haven't played that game in a long time. Mark's like, is this uh, one of those so ugly? It's good. I don't know. I just like it. I just really like it. I saw it and I was like, it's two hundred dollars. By the way, I saw it and I was like, I gotta have that one. I was like, instant buy. Bye, 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 bye. And I'm like, hurry up, because this is going to sell out. It probably hasn't. But I was like, all right, I got to rush. I got to rush. <laughs> Eric says the only good use is to use it at Burning Man 50K. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys are so funny. All right. Leona's got a good question here. Different subject. Mike, can you get Greg Itahara to make shirts for us with the Kafuzi Dragon? It looks so great. Um, I, I've been thinking. A lot of people have mentioned that. I've been thinking about it. What I need to do 
is I'd like to figure out, so I keep getting all these emails about like, hey, would you like to use our like print on demand service? Or you can print a bunch ahead of time if you want to take pre-orders. So that way, like if you want to take the inventory risk, you know, and buy a bunch ahead of time and then sell it, we'll handle all that for you. What I'm really trying to figure out is, you know, and I've talked to Path Projects about it a little bit. I guess maybe I could talk to them a little bit more. What I'd like to be able to do is to buy a bunch of stuff, like take a pre-order, right? And we'll do like a run of Kafuzi Run Club singlets. Other people have mentioned like a Kafuzi Run Club hoodie, you know, and then I'll buy, I'll buy them all. And then, but I don't want to have to deal with tax or shipping, right? And so like, I got to figure out a way, like I need like a warehousing service, you know? So I'm like, can I just do that on Amazon? So I think I might be able to do that on Amazon, but I don't know if I'll be enough volume to make it worthwhile on Amazon. I'm not sure. So I'm trying to figure something out where we can do that. And so I'd like to have like something that's a little bit more regular. Um, and again, this is where if my niece, it's unfortunate that she has such good job prospects because I feel like this is something that I could give to her and she could handle it and figure it out. Um, but it's not enough work to like give her a full-time job. You know what I mean? So like, I got, I don't know. Like I, I, I envy, um, um, Ben's, uh, Ben Parks setup. I don't know how he has it. I mean, I don't know that he's got his mother-in-law involved, but like, or not mother-in-law. I think it's his mom or is it Sarah's mom? Someone's involved. You get a handwritten note from someone's mom when you order something from Ben Parks. And, um, like, they have really nice boxes. Packaging's great. The whole experience is great with Ben Parks. But, like, that's not going to scale up. You know, I can't do that for people to sell it in the United States, have it shipped from the UK, you know? So, I got I to gotta figure, figure something out. Um, I need, a, like, a business person to help me. All right. Um, oh, man. Eric says, darn academic duty calls. Later, y'all. Let's bring some hideous kicks to the live stream next week. Okay, we'll do it. We'll we'll we'll, we'll do an ugly shoe competition next week. That's what we'll do. Um. All right. Yeah. Sean says maybe maybe give it to her as a side hustle, and she gets to put it on her resume. I don't. I you know I don't want to mess around with with someone that's like right out of college. You know, like let, do the job first and just like kick butt at that. You know what I mean? Well, I guess if she's if she wants a side hustle, she can have it. But um. All right, Al Davino says, Co, watch your LA Marathon recap. Your last three mile chant was pretty inspiring. It's so simple. I can, I will. It's like it's like the little engine that could, basically. Um, but it works. It worked for me. I'm glad it worked for you. He says, I sure needed that at Sam for my last three as those rollers beat me up. Yeah, I could have used it a little bit more too. I feel like I have to write it on myself next time. Like right right where my wrist is. I got a next race, I'm gonna write some messages to myself because I forget them myself, you know. All right. Um, Dave wants to know, hey, how was your run club? I managed to get a place at the Chicago Marathon ballot. Is it a good idea to eat deep dish the day before? I would say that if you, Dave, congratulations, um, getting into Chicago. Awesome. If I regularly eat pizza, like the weekend of a marathon, right? So for me, eating deep dish the day before, not a problem. Um, if you don't normally eat something that's as heavy as pizza, uh, like before a long run, I would say maybe not, you know? Or you got lots of time to build it up and build your tolerance, not only for taking in sugars during your running and your long runs and races, but also eating deep dish pizza before a race. Uh, all right. All right, here we go. This is the Takumi Sen. I could tell this box is much lighter. Um, it's actually even a smaller box too. Here we go, Takumi Sen, size nine. Um, I bought this one myself. The Adiz, Adizero SL, they sent to me. Adiz sent to me. Oh my goodness, this shoe is so light and it looks great. Um, black on gray, my favorite combo. I don't love how shiny it is, but I think that'll probably change after I get it scuffed up a little bit. Um, it's got a 33 um, printed, stamped into the heel, 33 millimeter stack height. Um, doesn't look like a substantial change from the outsole perspective. Um, but I know that they are tinkering around with their light strike pro, but given how early this is and how they said they weren't happy without the, I don't know if I can tell you that. I don't know that this is going to be the 20, 
I don't know if this is going to be the same exact light strike pro that you're going to see in like the audios pro four. Let's just say I'm confident that it's not, let's just say that. Um, what I do think is going to be the substantial difference here, other than the fact that it just feels so much lighter. Um, cause I think they've changed the upper significantly. It's a lot more of that, like transparent stuff. Um, I do like these kind of like panels here. See that it looks like a grid give a little bit of extra structure in the shoe right there. Um, they mentioned, and I think I can tell you this now because the shoe, I'm holding the shoe in my hand that I bought. So I think I could tell you what they told me at the booth, at least about this shoe, is that um, they've tweaked the carbon. So I think that it's going to be, um, hopefully, I mean, it's more even better suited for that 5K, 10K racing uh, because that's how people have been using the shoe and enjoying the shoe primarily. And, you know, they have the Adios Pro uh, as their half marathon and marathon racer. So like, I don't think they're going to, you know, worry about this one trying to like cannibalize or like have multiple use cases. I think this is the one that they're going to be using for that 5K, 10K. Not going to worry about trying to make this a half marathon or shoe because I got other shoes that are better for that. But I'm interested to see what these energy rods how they've been tweaked um, are going to fare. Man, this shoe is just so incredibly light. It's so much lighter than last year's. I don't know how that's possible, but still got a little bit of a bumper pad back here. So I think it's going to be nice and comfortable. Looks great. Um, as, I mean, as far as I can tell, like it looks very similar. It, it, I, I think that I would have a hard time figuring out that. I mean, I think maybe this would be a little bit of a giveaway. I don't think they had this little flippy thing in eight is it over here i have it down here somewhere i don't know where it is um but once you pick it up you know that this is different it's just so much lighter so that is takumi Sen nine cannot wait to feel good enough to start doing some repetitions in that one uh timothy says the Sen nine only gets an upper update but the rest of the 23 24 lineup will have the new version of the light strike pro that's coming from Timothy Wright. I didn't say that. Um, but yeah, so like, I think that with how early we got the light strike, there's no way they could have um, tinkered with it, but it does feel lighter. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if they did tune the energy rods any different, or if it's just a lighter version of the exact same shoe. If that's the case, even just that, pretty great. Pretty great. Um, Dominic says, damn, that's a good looking shoe. Adidas says, hands on the best looking shoes 2023. I don't know. Let me see. I'm trying to think. Saucony usually has some really great upper designs. I'm not sure they're... I mean, I, I also don't think that the 2023 is going to be visually all that different. It's a little bit more like angular and like math-y than 2022, but it's very... I think it's going to be... The aesthetic's very similar, but their 2022s look... Two shoes look great. Um, Adam says, how does the SE Pacer compare? You know, I think I'm going to have to get a pair of those. I, I, don't, I haven't run in them. And, um, you know, what's interesting is that Emily Sisson didn't run in a pair of SE Elites when she set the American record. She ran in a modified SE Pacer. So, um, that was like, oh, I want to try the SE Pacer. And I'm like, actually, I don't want the SE Pacer. I want the modified SE Pacer. Why can't they make that? I was like, they should make that for everyone. But I'm also like, that's a probably a shoe that makes sense if you're as strong as Emily Sisson, you know? So, uh, but I do think that like with some 5K, 10K work, um, testing out the Takumi Sen, I, I got to get the SE Pacer in, into the mix as well. All right. Uh, Luke Klein says, what I missed, Takumi Sen, what up with that? Yeah, it's right here. I'll pull it back out. Um, it feels a lot lighter than last year's. Um, I think that it's the same light strike. I don't think that given when they're releasing it, they don't have time to really tweak it too much. Um, but in hand, it just feels like an incredibly light shoe. Uh, my understanding is that they're messing around with the energy rods and tweaking it a little bit, but I don't, maybe they have, maybe they haven't. There's only one way for me to find out. Timothy Wright um, chimed in and said that he thinks it's just an upper update, but if they just took the same shoe from last year, and put a new upper on it that's lighter, I think that's a big win. But we'll see if they actually have, in fact, tuned this carbon differently. If it's noticeable for someone that's underperforming in the 5K, like I am. And I say that because, like, 
I've been looking a lot, getting ready for um, Tokyo, trying to think of like, what are my, how am I going to set goals? What are my goals? And I've been looking at a lot of like, you know, comparable, like if you're running this kind of marathon time, what should your other half marathon 10K, 5K times would be? Um, and I'm underperforming in the 5K based on my marathon time. That's okay. I was sick when I set a marathon, a 5K PB this year. So I feel like, you know, I, I think I'm okay. I'm, I'm not worried about my 5K time. All right. That was, a, that was the most interesting stuff that I had for today. This box... I didn't remember to take off the address labels before I brought it up on this table is uh, from rabbit. I've been talking a lot about rabbit lately and I feel like they've sent me a bunch of stuff already. So I'm like, I don't even know what's left. I feel like I have the entire line for the winter. So I'm like, what is in the box? I don't know, but I'm, I'm just glad that they now have like an updated address and I'd have to drive all the way back to Chicago to pick these up. Mm, all right. Well, this came with like red paper on it and everything. It's like a, maybe it's a present. Oh, there's a note in here. Oh, happy holidays from your friends at Rabbit. We appreciate you. I wanted to send you some holiday running cheer your way. Here's some many healthy, adventurous miles in 2023. Signed, the founders. Cool. Well, thank you guys. We've got first, this is the men's zip and relax charcoal, um, which actually comes in handy because I've run so many races this year that um, I've gotten rid of all of my zipper, um, like sweatshirt type tops. And this is kind of like a fleece. It's a full zip, um, like that mock neck, but this is nice. It's very soft, a little bit thick on the kind of like the heavyish side um at least along the collar so the parts that are like touching your skin feel really nice it's like a fleece layer this is going to be really nice um got pockets on each side uh rabbit logo on the chest yeah really nice um they put some stickers in here which my kids will love and this is um, defroster pocket tights. I don't know why they always put tights with a Z. Defroster pocket tights, black and pearl. Black and pearl. I like the sound of that. So, oh, nice. It's the tights that I love, but the full length version. I have these in black already. The pockets that I think are excellent. One on the left. This one has the rabbit logo on the left side. Pocket on the right. And then a zip pocket in the back. You could fit six gels even probably eight gels and a phone in these pants it's got a reflective rabbit on the back right on the calf on the right calf and then zippers with some reflective detailing for easy in and out so these are great i love this color hopefully this means that there'll be a half tight in this color in the spring but yeah this is nice we'll definitely get a lot of use out of that and then oh there's two more things in here <laughs> performance plaid i love it i don't have this one so this is great um every time i see the performance flat i buy some sedona sage long sleeve flannel i love it nice oh this is like a never-ending box There's two more things in here martha says that's dark taupe by the way oh was it for the, I don't know which one is dark taupe. I, you know what? If someone said something was taupe and asked me to point it out on the color wheel, I, I would have no idea. <laughs> All right. This is the uh, cold front dress blues men's. Ooh, yes. This is nice. Um, this is like a thicker under layer. I, ha I think I have this in black already. It's kind of like uh, they have that hoodie, but it's was without a hood so it's like a crew neck so it works really well as an underlayer i love this color i usually don't like blue but this is not like regular blue it's more like a cobalt maybe um like regular blue like royal blue i'm not a big fan but this is nice i like this um and this time of year again it's gonna be perfect for some layering and then the last thing is the cocoon in black 
I think I have this already. What's the cocoon? Let me look at it, make sure. Uh... Ah, yes. This is the one. <laughs> this is the third <laughs> one that they sent me of these. Uh, um, but I do love it. It's the one with like the um, ne neck gaiter built into it. Really nice. This material, it's a little bit thicker than in the material of the, the um, crew deck that I just showed you. So this is definitely can be worn like as a jacket layer. It's got watch holes on each side and thumb holes as well. So really nice. Um, some reflective stripe down the back. Uh, and this is something that you could wear deep into the winter if you don't want to wear a jacket. So this is a really cool layer. Um, got a rabbit, reflect the rabbit logo on one of the sleeves as well. Um, but yeah. Whew. That's all the... Oh, wait. There's more unboxing. Did I show you this already? This is the shoe I've had in here for a while. I got one more. I think I showed... Did I show you this? This, 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 this is the Reebok Float Ride 4 Adventure. This one? I think I showed this to you guys. Um, now that I'm holding it in my hand, I feel like I have showed it to you guys. But I just wanted to show this to you guys again because I just think this one's nice. I'm not super excited about like the new float rides because I feel like it's always the same shoe. It's becoming almost like a ghost. It's a good shoe. It's a decent shoe, but I'm like, it doesn't change. So if, like for me, I'm not entertained, you know, a little bit, but that's just me. But this adventure one looks nice. And I think I might wear this around in the winter. I don't know if I'm going to run in it, but like if I want to wear a sneaker in the winter, I feel like this is a nice one. Kind of matches my shirt too, which is a Brooks shirt coincidentally. So. All right, and I have one more. I have one more shoe I want to show you guys. I showed you guys a Hyperion Max, right? But I have another one anyway. I'll be right back. I didn't bring it over here. Adam says, which is better, taupe or mauve? I, I, I don't know. What, I don't know what region of the color wheel you're on, Adam. I have no idea. I think they're both cream, right? They're both cream colors. Is that, is that what it is? I don't know. Uh, yeah, Martha says, it's not a great endorsement for a running shoe if you just plan to wear it casually in the winter. Well, the thing is, it's not a bad shoe, and it's a, a really great price. Um, but it's ex 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 exactly like the last float ride adventure that I rain in which is exactly like the float ride and it's supposed to have like a trail treatment to it but like it's trail in the sense that like the nova blast trail is a trail shoe you know the upper is a little bit more rugged than the nova blast trail is like the nova blast trail is just like there's more rubber on the outsole like the nova blast trail should really just be called like the nova blast extra rubber <laughs> but that sounds weird so they call it trail um so yeah I, like from a review perspective, I'm like, I don't know what to say about it, you know. Um, all right. Here's a shoe that I haven't showed. This is a shoe I haven't showed you yet. Oh, look, it comes with a sticker. I think my kids will like this. Nike Trail, the Winnebago sticker. I think they had this Winnebago at TRE. So I think that's part, like it's their big thing. Um, but... Peg Trail 4 Gore-Tex. Is that what this is officially called? Yeah, Peg Trail 4 Gore-Tex. Um, I wanted, I was, I've been waiting on this shoe. I loved 3. I even like this half gator, which a lot of people complain about, but I like this like little fake gator that's back behind here. And I had been waiting for the black version to come out. This is the launch colorway. Let's get some focus. Focus. There we go. Um, but Thomas, Thomas is the reason why I bought a lot of shoes that are here today. Thomas was like, this shoe's on sale for like 90 bucks right now or like a hundred bucks. I forget. It was really cheap. So I got it for like a hundred bucks. So I was like, all right, for like 60 to save 60 bucks to get it for like a third off, I'll run in this color, which I'm kind of like liking white for winter running. And I usually you only use the peg trail in uh winter running so i kind of like this one the other shoe that is thomas's fault is that um takumi sen because um 
he was like, uh, this shoe's not supposed to come out for like six months, but it's on the Adidas website, so go buy it. I was like, will do. So I did that. And then, and then Drew Wickholm had messaged me like, did you see that this is on sale now? I'm like, yeah, I know. I just ordered it. We'll see if it actually ships. Um, but if you guys want to look at the outsole, I know like Thomas has mentioned uh, and Robbie have mentioned that they have not liked the outsole in the previous Preg Trails. I have not found them to be a problem. I've been running in like slush and stuff, but like I guess I run in different materials than what Robbie and Thomas do. Um, but like, yeah, the outsole pattern is very different this year. And see how much like they're they're covering less of the outsole in rubber, which I'm like, can the regular Pegasus start going this direction too then maybe? You know? So there we go. Those are all the shoes. So I got a lot of work. I got a lot of miles coming up. I got a lot of B-roll to shoot. Um, I bought a couple new toys for the studio too. So you'll be seeing some of that stuff coming up in some of the videos. Um, so, you know, not, I don't, I don't want to say they're necessarily upgrades, but they're new, I guess, accoutrement. It's a new, like, flourishes, I guess. So you'll see it. Um, Sean Devlin wants to know, is anyone else anti-Nike? I assume things have changed, but I just feel gross wearing anything Nike from all the sellers or stuff, et cetera. It's the one company I don't buy from. Um, I mean, I'm with you on that, Sean, you know, it, and it's not just the Salazar stuff though. It's just the way that they treat women. It's the way that they've treated their athletes, um, in the past in terms of just contract negotiations too, um, dragging people along, um, and um, strong arming them for no other reason than to kind of like win the negotiation, I guess. Not that they have to be a charity, but like, I don't know. I just feel like uh, they leverage their position to take advantage of much smaller actors. Like, for example, like a multinational corporation worth billions versus like a 22 year old, you know? So like that's a lot of that stuff is just stuff that doesn't make me feel great. Um, my compromise that I've stricken is that I'll test some of the things that I'm really interested in. Um, but like, I'm not going to really wear, I didn't go to the booth at TRE. I'm not going to wear the stuff, you know, just what I need to do the review. So yeah, lose like that whole Lance Armstrong cover up too. I mean, like every direction you look, there's been like, oh yeah, there's, there was that. Oh yeah. So like I'm trying to like turn over a new leaf well, again yesterday i was like i'm not i, I don't want to be the guy that like has a gripe against every brand but i feel like this goes beyond bri gripe you know what i mean so um yeah tempered enthusiasm is kind of what it is uh and there's a reason why like i don't like review every single nike shoe anymore so um yeah so um dave says philly bowden's story from the oregon project is hard to read great youtuber though you know i didn't know that she uh was on the oregon project i'm not aware of that story i know her from youtube and i know she ran for oregon but like that i didn't I, and i know she's had issues with disordered eating when she was back there she's mentioned that on her channel i'm not like spilling tea or anything but i didn't know that there was an another part to the story although like the way she talks about it, i was like there's more here but I'll have to kind of see if I can find that. Uh, if it's like very public, you know. Uh, Sean says, sorry, I didn't mean to change the vibe of the live stream. Totally cool, man. But I think it's worth, you know, reminding people that like, you know, people like, people want to know like, hey, how come I don't see X, Y, Z? There's reasons usually. So, uh, yeah. Mm, you know. Uh, but all right, yeah, I think that's everything that's uh, that I have in here to show you guys in terms of like stuff. Um, so here's the thing: I got to get all this stuff like filmed and figure out what I'm going to bring because we're leaving soon for the holidays, um, and like I don't want to shoot B-roll at Grandma's house. Um, I've done it before and it's fine, but like you know, there's just going to be a lot of people there, and like Christmas stuff is happening, and it just becomes like a big thing. I think I think it annoys a lot of people. Or just becomes like a nuisance. So, you know. Yeah. Um, so I got to get a lot of this stuff to try to get it done. Uh, next video that's going to come out is going to be the race recap. It's really long. I'm going to try to, I don't know if it needs to be that long. So we'll see if it ends up staying long. But I know, I don't know. We'll see. 
Um, but then I got to do a lot of other videos too. I got a lot of other talking to do. I got work to do now that I'm out of the sequestration of the bedroom, I guess. Um, Adam says, do you need to bring a rooftop box for all the gear you're bringing? No, because we got a giant minivan now. So uh, we got room for plenty of stuff. But I think I'm only going to try, I'm going to try to limit it to like three shoes. I'm going to bring the new, the all white Asics shoe. I don't think I showed you guys that, but everyone has seen those. Um, so I'm going to probably bring those. I'm, I don't, I want to bring those new Hoka's, those big boys. I'm probably not going to bring those because I don't think I'm going to run with it. I'm probably going to bring the regular Mafate 4 um, and put some miles in that. It's going to snow, so that'll be good Some get, get some snow footage in that. And then maybe I'll bring the peg trails to do some trail running in that, Chris in that, in some uh, Iowa cliffs, you know? Um, yeah, so it won't be that many shoes, but I, you know, I'll have a lot of clothes. But, you know, we you know, my mother-in-law still does a lot of like Christmassy stuff. So like, I can't, pa I can't pack heavy because I'm going to come back with a lot of stuff. So, um, Eliza says, I like the long videos. I watch when lifting. All right. Well, I think you're, you're going to be in for a treat. Cause not only got this, I got a watch video coming after that. And those are always long too. Cause I can't do those quickly. Mason wants to know if I tried the Primex two at the TRE booth. Uh, I, that's definitely under embargo still. Um, so I can, I think I can say yes. And I think I could say it's going to be good, but I think I, I don't, I think there's a lot of surprises there. Oh, there's a lot. I just can't say any more than that. Uh, Mika says that the Mafate fours are annoying in snow. The vamp picks up a lot of snow and moisture. Oh, okay. We'll see. We'll see. I'll have to give it a, uh, give it a shot. Mm, I could see cause it's got that, it's got the stretchy vamp or the, what is it? What they call it flexible vamp is what they're calling it so um yeah uh, martha's are you looking forward to the almond balls or whatever your mother-in-law makes oh yeah well here's the thing that stinks so um uh, because i got covid and gave it to one of my daughters too um like if we're following like cdc protocols like the big baking day it's a big day for all the grandkids to help grandma make all the cookies um and all the holiday treats is Saturday and like my like five days of isolation and then five days of avoiding people and wearing a mask still is Saturday and the babies I think is Sunday because she started having symptoms like a day after me so then we're I think we're gonna miss the baking but we'll be there for the eating I think but I don't know we're like she's already tested negative twice she's in school today and I test negative today. I feel like if we test negative like a bunch of times, I don't know, maybe that's okay. It's just, just like, I think all the siblings and nieces and nephews won't care. But like, you know, there are some people in an older age bracket that we have to worry about. So, you know, I don't know. Um, all right. James Ford said, I live in the Bay Area, California. Love seeing all the CIM stuff. As a guy who's been in a lot of work to get myself ready for a half marathon, what can I put on the calendar to meet Co in NorCal for a race? Uh, NorCal, I think CIM is my only NorCal race. Um, next year, I'm thinking about going for fun instead of racing. Not that racing isn't fun. Um, but I'm not sure. Given the way the calendar is going to shake out, I'm probably not going to run New York. I'll run Chicago, but I won't run New York. I'll probably, I don't know if I'll run Indy. Maybe I'll watch Indy, depending on if it falls on a different weekend this year than New York. I don't know. So, like, maybe I'll run CIM. But CIM does have a half marathon, but it's a relay. But a lot of the Kofuzi Run Club people like to team up and do that event. So, that might be a way to do it. Hmm. Dan John says, if, if you and your daughter miss the baking with all the cookies be only half baked, not if my mother-in-law has anything to do with it. They'll be perfect. Mm, Mace Wintanks wants to know if I tried the Endorphin Elite at the TRE booth. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention the name of a super secret shoe that I tried at the Saucony booth, but I did try a super secret, like a double secret probation shoe. Um, I did get to try it on as well because I'm reference size. And that is going to be super interesting. And I think that's all I can say about that. Like, I can't tell you more stuff. And this is why I don't like 
embargoes because this is like a silly game that we're playing here mace you know what i mean not that you're being silly the way i have to answer these questions is silly you know what i mean i feel like why shouldn't i be able to talk about it i don't know <sighs> xavier says come to valencia instead you know what i did look at the calendar and i was like maybe next year uh if thanksgiving falls like a different way for the u.s because it's thanksgiving is always like the fourth thursday it's not like a certain date so it's always like the fourth thursday in november and i was like depending on how it falls maybe the first weekend after thanksgiving will be a certain time and then valencia will be another time but again valencia and cim are on the same weekend so i don't, know, I don't think valencia is going to happen although there is a valencia half marathon that is like a month earlier, which I feel like is an interesting option. Who's the sponsor for Valencia? I think it's, is it New Balance? I think it's New Balance. Mm. Let's see. Michael Martinez says, any tips on getting faster for a BQ? I would say like uh, the two main things, like without knowing like what your background is and your history and getting into a long detailed thing. I would, the two things that really helped me were consistency over the seasons. Not to say that you got to run like peak mileage every single week, 52 weeks a year, but like making sure that you're like just running all year round when it's not like training for something, just easy miles could be low mileage, but just consistently running. Um, and then also doing a lot of miles at threshold effort. So like mile repeats, tempo work, like those kinds of things, those things make you strong for the marathon in my mind. And that's kind of what I'm be going back to a lot of, um, we're getting ready for Tokyo. All right. Another running shoe question. And then we'll probably get going for today. Mike Johnson wants to know, Hey, Kofuzi, what would you pick personally out of Saucony ride 15 new balance, 880 version 12 new balance, 1080 version 12 and Nike Pegasus 39. I personally want to run just one shoe for everything. Even marathon day, even marathon day. That's an interesting option. I would say that probably the 1080 version 12, because that's going to handle long runs a little bit better than the 880 version 12. I think the 880 version 12 is probably the best shoe out of this bunch here. Um, but I don't know that the 880 is like going to be someone's favorite marathon shoe. I think you might prefer like just a little bit of extra comfort that the 1080 provides for that one. So. I think I'll probably go with the 1080. The 1080 isn't going to have as quite as much like kind of top end speed. Um, the peg 39 is probably geared for like the fastest work um, with the 880 version 12 right behind it. The 1080 is a little bit on the slower side, but like if you want one shoe that could do easy day, long run day, marathon race day, and some workouts, I think the 1080 is a pretty good choice. That's what I'll go with. Luis backs me up. He says, definitely 1080. Um, yeah, and Jackie, I don't know if Jackie's here, but Jackie loves the 1080, I think. I don't know, Jackie, did you run your last marathon in the 1080s again? I don't know. All right. Um, Optisoans. Optisoans? I think, I'm, I think that's Optus Owens. It says, hi, Co. Hi, everyone. I'm a listener of the podcast. Really happy to be here, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Good to see you. All right. Uh, well, Frank says definitely get more than one shoe. And that's kind of what I would recommend. But the question was, if you can only do one. So I'm trying to answer the question the best I can. Um, all right. I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Hopefully, we'll have a race recap video for you guys tomorrow. It's long. It's going to take a long time to edit. But hopefully, I'll get it done today. Um, and then we'll have one more live stream tomorrow, Friday, same time as today, back here on this channel. Hopefully I'll see you guys. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.